yes, you can customize DJ Pro AI and make it your own. I'm DJ Spiegelspin. I make DJ tutorials about DJ Pro and DJing with the iPad, so subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more. All right, although we cannot customize as much as we can in other apps such as the old DJ version or EDJ Mix, there are some things that we can customize that may help you out depending on your style of DJ. So number one is going to be in the waveforms. So if you look over here at the one and the two on these corners, there's actually a hidden drop down menu for each waveform of each track. So right over here on the two, I'm gonna press the drop down menu. Now we have some options, slice and slip. I'll talk about that in other videos. That's more for mixing and juggling techniques. Next we have dark mode. So if you don't have dark mode selected, it is going to be the, behind the waveforms are gonna be the same color as everything else on the screen. And it makes it a little bit difficult to see, especially for me, because I'm colorblind. But if you, if this is better on your eyes, then you could leave it like that. But if you're DJing in kind of a light environment, maybe you're doing like a pool party or someplace where you'll be out in the sun, then I highly suggest turning, turning dark mode on. It makes it a lot easier to see. For me, keep that in mind. It's different depending on how your eyesight is. Next is going to be down here. If you're used to using... DJ software that isn't Jogware heavy, such as Tractor and other DJ softwares, then you might just get distracted by having these jog wheels here and it might not help you. It might actually hurt your DJ experience. So by ticking this off, we get a bigger view of our waveforms. And if you're thinking to yourself, how do I scratch? How do I adjust the jog wheels? It's the same thing if you move the waveforms. The waveforms are basically just horizontal jog wheels, so you could use it like that. And having this bigger view of the waveform makes it easier to DJ if you're using more of visual cues than audio cues. So if you're DJing with Bluetooth or you're not using your headphones, it's a good idea to see a big view of our waveforms. But I'll just turn the jog wheels back on. Next is you could actually go from horizontal waveforms to vertical waveforms. So you just tick on vertical waveforms and now you could have a vertical view of your waveform. So if you're used to using classic mode, where if you're used to the vertical waveforms in classic mode, but you want to get all the features out of pro mode, then you could set that. Also, if you were using DJ software where you got used to seeing vertical waveforms, then this might be very helpful to you. Personally, I keep it on hor horizontal waveforms with the jog wheels intact and with dark mode this makes it easier for me but remember nobody sees this this isn't for anyone else this is for you to make your DJing experience better so speaking of keeping the jog wheels out which I do I would go to settings we're gonna go to settings middle button settings now we're going to go to appearance this is the section in the settings where we could customize the most appearance now we have the jog wheels so the style that it will probably be on if you never change this after the update will be compact dark so look at this jog wheel over here it has the information of how long you're in the song how much you adjusted the bpm and how much of the song is remaining this is new from one of the recent pretty recent updates and it's great to have this information. A lot of expensive controllers will have this information in the middle of the jog wheel and other DJ softwares. And then we have the option, you could do compact dark, compact light, or extended. I keep it on extended. I like to have more surface area on the jog wheel. The bigger the surface area, then the less sensitive it is. So for scratching and adjusting, I find it to help a lot. And it really doesn't take up any more space. It just makes the jog wheel bigger. Now, next thing I want to show you about customization is going to be in the cue point section. So in the cue point section, we could do some customization. Anywhere you set a cue point, if you have the pencil button selected, we could change the name. So in a lot of my videos, I show you guys how to organize this, whether you want to mark the drops, mark where you're going to start and stop each track. Just do something that that makes sense to me. So if I was going to end a track, I would put it on the red cue point and I would write end. And then anytime I load up the song and I see the red, I know that is a good spot that I already 
checked, that will be a good spot to end the song. And another way you could customize it, if yours don't look like this, you could go to settings, go to appearance, go to style. So I'm in high contrast. Look at the look at the cue point when I change it to low contrast. So in low contrast, high contrast, the whole button is the color. Low contrast, just the arrow is. And it's kind of hard to see. I like having the colorful view and being able to see it better so I don't have to look as hard. When you're DJing, you want to be able to, able to do stuff on the fly and be able to make quick decisions. And having a bigger color makes it easier to see. Also, keep in mind, these colors will be in your on your controllers if you have RGB controllers such as the Reloop Buddy. Next is gonna be in classic mode. So we're in classic mode now. And take a look at these records or jog wheels, how it has the symbol from the artist or the song. So here we have a pretty popular album by The Weeknd. You could see that the album art is in the middle. If we go back to our settings, back to appearance, you have the option to show the tape marker. So the tape marker is going to be marked where we set our... So the tape marker is gonna be marked there. So if we take off the tape mark, you won't be able to see that. It's kind of an old school thing that DJs used to do on real vinyl to mark their tracks. So if that helps you, then you can leave it on. I usually leave it off because I don't really use it. Next is to show the full artwork on the disc. So instead of just the middle, it's going to show the artwork on the whole record, which could give you a pretty cool old school feel. And if it helps you, I find it to be distracting. So when I'm customizing mine, I leave it on just the middle because I feel like the, all the big pictures, some are really bright, some have a lot of words on them, and it could throw you off while you're DJing. So for me, I leave it off. Next is going to be back on our waveforms. Let's go to pro mode. So you can sh see the bar numbers. So let me turn this off. Bar numbers are off. So there's no numbers on the waveforms. Now if we go back, put it on. Now we see the bars marked. So in the beginning, it's going to be like one, two, three. And you could get an idea of where the bars and the beats are. I like to keep that on. Another one is the minute markers. So it's gonna show you these little dots over here. The only place you're gonna see these markers are these tiny little dots up here. Those are gonna represent minutes. So it's a, it's a good feature to help you know where, how far along the song is, how much of the song you played by knowing how many minutes went by. So remember to customize these the way that makes sense to you. It doesn't matter about what anyone else thinks because this is what you see and the audience won't see it. And check out one of these videos up here where I go into detail about more of DJ Pro AI's hidden features and best settings. Thanks for watching.